there is a subtle and then a certain a momentum shift and it's only represented in one year of data so we can't yet it's far too soon to be talking about a halt in structural momentum but at the same time last year we estimate that BRICS Africa trade amounted to just less than 350 billion dollars now this is a significant amount not just nominally but certainly for Africa in relation to its other trading blocks, this is of course a large and very significant amount. This is up roughly 5% from 2012. So 5% growth is again far slower in terms of growth of trade with the BRICS than we have become accustomed to. But it's still growing and that's a very important point which we have to assess in light of the fact that since 2008, for the most part, our trade with advanced world partners has either declined or flatlined. We estimate that trade with, with between BRICS and Africa was about $350 billion. Now, just off the bat, that's a tremendous volume of trade with a s relatively small grouping of countries. Now, China accounts for 60% of that with what we estimate to be $210 billion of trade with Africa. So on the one hand, uh, trade grew roughly 5% from 2012, which is in the context of since 2000 between the BRICS and Africa, slow trade growth. So it is still growth, which is important to, to, to understand, but it's much slower than we previously saw. We're going to see slight slowing of demand for African commodities in these big industrializing emerging markets, primarily China as well as India. Last year we didn't see a decline as well, we just saw slower growth of African exports of commodities to these markets. So for example, between 2010 and 2011, we saw exports from Africa to China increase by $40 billion, so a massive leap. Uh, in, sorry, to the BRICS, which was mostly to China, of $40 billion. Last year, there was an increase of between 3 and $5 billion of exports to these economies. So demand stayed pretty stable, but it didn't grow. And this is something that I think African countries have to factor in. Looking ahead, we cannot uh, factor in, or at least we cannot be complacent about the fact that this, this voracious BRICS appetite for, for African res resources will just carry on increasing at the pace that it has. Now the, the external environment for the BRICS is somewhat more favorable. We expect that global growth will be around 2% this year. We expect that's, that's up from 1% last year, at least growth within the advanced economies. We're seeing real signs of progress in the United States. We're seeing in some key European Union economies as well. But the challenges for the BRICS are internal now. They rather than previously where the challenges were external. China has tremendous domestic challenges as it tries to shift the engines of its economy from export and investment-led growth towards consumption-led growth. So they want to internalize some of those growth dynamics. That doesn't come without uh, short-term, medium-term uh, difficulties, and it's certainly something that they're going to, from the policy side, going to have to negotiate. They, have, they do understand and appreciate the problems they face. At the, at the plenum at the end of last year, they were outlined in great detail. If they can follow through with those, China's economy in three to five years will be on a firmer footing than it is now. But obviously, those are policies that have to now be implemented. It's nothing that Africa can do. It certainly has to be, th those changes have to be done from within the BRICS themselves. When we look at a slowing China, we need to not take an alarmist view in the African context. This is not going to bottom out China's relations with Africa. It's not going to hollow out the, the tremendous growth and, and momentum that has been attached to this relationship. We have always said that Africa now, with the BRICS, with other emerging markets, has a multiple, has, has a multi, faces a multipolar economic universe. So unlike in the past, when if the advanced world, particularly Europe, was in crisis, Africa had no option. That was our principal and, and, and often primary trade and investment partner. Now we've got these other poles of influence, which is, gives us diversity, it gives us resilience, and, and that certainly is a positive thing. China is slowing, but Africa remains fundamentally important to it from a, tr a structural perspective. And it's very likely that in five years' time we'll emerge from this with, a firmer f with China on a firmer footing, a more resilient economy, still with that, with that crutch of, of its demand for African commodities and its ability to provide the goods that Africans demand. What we do need to see, though, is Africa investing the money that it gains from these resources into building productive capacity in their own economies. Because down the line, we have to be manufacturing the products that we demand. We can't simply just be importing them from, from abroad.